G'day guys, kia ora, welcome back to my channel, my name is Wildcard. If you do like my content, please feel free to subscribe, and if you'd like to buy me some instant coffee, hit the join button down below. So, first stop for the 2021 Spring Tour for the mighty All Blacks is the United States of America. The All Blacks is invading the USA for the first stop of the Spring Tour. This could potentially look like a big big one-sided affair for the All Blacks. A few very, very big names returning to the team for the All Blacks, including Sam Kane, the former captain. Sam Wylock is back in the fall. Richie Muonga is starting for this, this game. So the All Blacks has really brought out some of the big guns, mix and matching with some of the newer players for this match. And it's looking like it's going to be a very, very big uphill battle for the United States uh, US Eagles. Especially the Eagles, after playing their Rugby World Cup 2023 qualifier rounds, six, six of their main players actually has to go back to Europe and no longer available for this game against the, the mighty All Blacks. So, the USA team is stripped of some of the core players and the, yeah, it's gonna, it's just, you know, it's a very tough spot for the United States team. So let's have a look at some of the news before we head into the lineup. So as I've mentioned, Sam Wylock is back and Sam Wylock actually retains the captaincy over Sam Kane for the All Blacks. Now Sam Kane hasn't played for quite a while and he's only just been back. This will be the first game back from injury. He's been out pretty much since the start of the Super Rugby season. Sam, Sam Kane has been criticized a bit for not as good as Richie McCall. As you know, uh, the, he is not getting the starting slot. He's coming off the bench. So he's been getting a little bit of tongue lash from the media these couple of days. While well, Sam Wylock had a bit of baby duty, he came back into the fold, I think at the start of the spring tour. And also a potential, uh, a big debut for Josh Lord potentially, as he comes off the bench, potentially for this goal, he will definitely come off the bench for the All Blacks. So yeah, that's pretty much the big changes for the All Blacks team. Let's have a look at, uh, so for the American team, for the U United States team, six of their leading players have to return to Europe. As seen here, they cannot play due to availability. And last time the United States played New Zealand, they lost six points to 74. Massive, massive losses for the team. Now going into this match, the All Blacks has been almost perfect the whole season. They won all their July test series against Tongan and Fiji quite comfortably. And then quite comf comfortably flogged the tier two nation of Australia. And then quite comfortably beat Argentina with Argentina being on the road for a long, long, long time since July and being quarantined since July. So it really affected a lot of the performance according to their coach. And then having a really tough double header series against the Springboks, winning the first one and then only losing by a hairline in the second test. So they've only lost one game this season, almost getting the so-called Grand Slam for the Rugby Championship. And yeah, this is not looking good for the United States team. And during this championship, a lot of the New Zealand, some of the New Zealand core players like Sam Kane, Sam Wylock, Richie Muonga were away. So it's not even the strongest possible team. Some of the bigger names. Yeah. So the United States had a bit of a rough couple of months, a few months now. So in July, they traveled to Europe to play England, had a really poor start against England, and then came back, pretty beating England in the second half, actually, after getting flogged in the first half, still losing the game. But overall, it was a really weird game, actually. England had so many injuries in the back line, they, had a, they started putting forwards in the backs. So that's kind of like one of the reasons why the England can't, that's, you know, still, you shouldn't be losing terribly to the United States. And then they got flogged in Ireland a week later. And then in the September, they played Canada in a home and away cumulative game for the qualifying 
for Rugby World Cup and they lost to Canada away in Canada and then winning the second test to beat Canada for to, to beat Canada in overall points scored, right? So then they had to go play Uruguay to to finalize to get that f- to to see if they can qualify for the uh, to, for the for the Rugby World Cup. They beat Uruguay at home, nineteen points to sixteen, and then got dominated away by Uruguay. So then Uruguay qualifies for the Rugby World Cup based on points difference. And now here we are playing against the All Blacks in Washington D.C. The weather is going to be okay on Saturday, Saturday evening in Washington. So it's not going to, doesn't look like it's going to be that too much of an issue. Maybe a little bit of a humidity, but overall it's going to be okay. Now, the team lineup. So I've got a bit of notes for the United States players. I'm just going to give to them. Most of the players from the United States players for Major League Rugby, as I mentioned before, all the European players has to return to their clubs in Europe. So first up, we've got Matthew Harmon. He plays for Major League Rugby in New Orleans Gold. Uh, hooker Dylan Forsweet, For- Forsett, Dylan Forsett, plays for Ohio Avatars. Paul Mullen, a number of tight head position for the USA Eagles. He he's actually an Irishman, played for the Irish under 19. Uh, Munster uh, was in the Munster under 20s team. He's now currently playing for the San Diego Legion. So the All Blacks has shuffled up some of their front rowers as well. They have Angus Tarvel coming back in the starting spot at number three. I think I don't know. I think this might be his first starting for the 2021. As- Asafo Amoa it come off the, is off the bench now on the number two spot. And Ethan De Groot is at the loose prop position. This picture of Ethan, he looks very, very South African. Looks like a young John Schmidt. So let me know if you think he looks at that. I know he's born in New Zealand, but with a name like De Groot, his roots is very South African-ish. Anyway, and then in the lock positions for the USA Eagles, we have Nate Barkley and Nick Savita. Nate Barkley plays for the, the or both teams play both players play for the New New York New York team, New York rugby team, and in the Major League Rugby, and both players happens to be 300 IQ, okay? So, Barkley, now, Bra- Brakely, I must, I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I'm clearly, like, way below this guy's IQ. Brakely goes to Dartmouth, and, uh, went to Dartmouth, and Nick Savita is currently attending Oxford. So, yeah. 300 IQ, combining 600 IQ in the second row here for the for the USA <laughs> team. And then up against Tupo Tavai and Sam Whitelock. Sam Whitelock, 127 caps. Tupo Tavai getting, I think it's, this might be his second chance at the team in the All Blacks jersey this year. Uh, with a number, but he's, I think this might be his first start for the All Blacks. Sam Whitelock. After being away for a bit of a baby duty, he's back at number five. Probably the best lock in the world right now. So this is, I wonder if the 600 combined IQ from the United States team is able to actually put up with Sam Wildlock's 127 test caps. We shall see which one pulls out ahead. FYI, it's 127 caps. Anyway, uh, Sam Wildlock is retains his captaincy as well. So for the loose forward positions, for the in at uh, the blindside flanker Benjamin Bosano, he is he actually grew up in Argentina. Uh, he's currently playing in New York. Hanko Jamishu Shuwais, he is playing for New York as well. And uh, Cam Dolan, the I think he's the most experienced player for the United States team at fifty six caps. He or he plays for the San Diego Legion. And for the All Blacks, we have Luke Jacobson, Dalton Papali for the for the flankers. Two players has been very very consistent, incredibly solid so far this year, despite their relatively new to the All Blacks team. They are in the newspaper starting to they are pretty much like a very starting to become the two premier loose Lucys for the All Blacks. Especially when Sam Kane has been injured, Dalton Papa Lee has been filling that role quite 
well. So there'll be a bit of competition for that seven jersey potentially. At number eight, Hoskins Sotutu back in the starting spot. I think this might be his first starting and the Ardi Savia is getting a break this game. Now in the back line for the Americans, Nate Augs Augsperger. Augsperger, Nate Augsperger, he plays for the New Orleans Gold. Finlay Christie gets another start. I think this might be his first start as well, or maybe the second one. For I think he might have started in Tonga game or something. He's is back in the number nine jersey, and he, yeah, it's interesting to see him at number nine because I thought they might be playing trying out Brad Weber combination with Richie Mwanga. This will be a good time to test out that combination because they do seem to like Weber as the starting knight over TJ Piranara. And TJ Piranara is on the bench again this game. So I thought it's interesting that they're putting Christie and I instead of Weber for that, you know, to work out that combination with Richie Mwonga. So Weber is not playing this game at all. And so a number 10 position for the American, the Luke Carty, he plays for the... He's actually another Irishman who plays for the LA Giltiness. 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 LA Giltiness. I don't actually know how, how to pronounce these names. Giltiness. And he is up against the greatest of all time, Richie Mwonga. Uh, he's finally back after having a baby. And he he played a little bit against the Springboks in the last test match. And he played about 15 minutes. He was He came on the field and got smashed really didn't do much after that I don't even think he did even I don't even think he attempted a kick that game so he really didn't do much that game against in 15 minutes and Jordi Barrow was doing the kicking because he was doing so good so Richie Mwonga will be kicking this game to see whether he's still got that see if his rust is you know wonder if he's got a bit of rust on him so really hard to say what form Richie is on because he was away for about a month in lockdown so I don't think you know, I don't think he's going to be able to hit the gym quite, you know, freely as he would with the team. So not sure how that has affected his physical performance. So he, he may be, I mean, obviously he's going to be training now and getting back in shape. But maybe there's still be a bit of rust to be worked out. We'll see how he performs this game. This will be a pretty, pretty easy, should be a pretty easy game for him. Number 11 position, Ryan Mat Matthias for the Eagles. He plays for San Diego Legions. He's up against George Bridge. Worst winger. But yeah, okay. So he's back. This should be an easy game for George Bridge. And um, yeah, I don't know what to say. George Bridge. I don't know what to say. So Rico gets a break, I guess. Rico gets a break. Seven Risk gets a break. At number 12 position in the inside center, Bryce Campbell. 37 test caps. Bryce plays for the Austin Gilgronos. 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 What, what, Gil, I don't even know what this word means. He plays for Austin. He plays for Austin in Texas. He's up against Quinn Tupaya. He's finally getting another shot at the inside center position. The, so far this year, the All Blacks has been pretty settled. Seemingly for with the Crusader inside center, David Havili. And... Yeah, so Quinton, this will be a very, very big opportunity for him to prove to himself that he could challenge his number 12 jersey spot. I don't think... It's it's actually pretty up for grabs, to be honest, number 12 jersey. David Havili is not exactly, you know, Sonny Bill Williams or Maya Nonu that pretty much world-class yet. And he's got a long way to go before he can... You know, before I will consider him to be world-class level. So... It's definitely up for grabs, and if Quinn put in some good performances, he will be up for 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 selection for the twelve jersey. I think he came off the bench against the Springboks in the first Test match and won a penalty for the All Blacks to win the game in the first Test against the Springboks when they won. So Quinn, this he's definitely in the mix to potentially get in that twelfth starting spot. So we shall see how he goes this weekend. Very keep keep an eye out. On his like keep a you know get a big mag magnifying glass out and you know follow him around the field to see how he how he travels because yeah um, Havili is definitely not you know a guaranteed pick for the 12 jersey in my opinion number 13 jersey Tavite Lopetti 
He has two caps for the United States. He only debuted this year. He plays for Aust uh, He plays for Seattle Seawolves. There's very little information on this guy. So there's a few guys in the American team. There's, there's not even a Wikipedia page for you to look for. So I, I might have some of these stats wrong. If I do, let me know because I, I generally can't find any information on them. The, the, this, I have to like look at the social media and stuff to find out who they are. So anyway, uh, he's up and up against Brandon Inor at number 13 jersey for the All Blacks. Finally getting another opportunity for the All Blacks at two test caps building on that resume. Outside center position, also up for grabs with Antonell and Brown. The veteran not really performing to the his his well not performing to his form from previous years. So potential opening here for Brandon or anyone to seize that number 13 jersey. Rico could potentially be at number 13. But I do think Rico is probably better at wing, to be really frank. Though, although nowadays, as a winger, kicking game is really important and Rico can't kick. So I can see why they want him at number 13. But yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a weird spot for the All Blacks team as well. They probably will prefer Anton Leonard Brown to get back in form and just slot him back in there. But yeah, Brandon Enor, another opportunity for him for sure. At number 14 spot, James Ryan for the Eagles. Potentially debuting, couldn't find any information or any games he's played so far. He may have played some games before. He plays for the LA Giltiness team. Will Jordan, at number 14, back in the mix. Probably one of the most devastating try scorers for the All Blacks, especially against inexperienced teams. He's scored five tries against Tonga, or six, five or six. He's just absolute try scoring machine. And against the Eagles, this could be another record-breaking performance by Will Jordan. And uh, he's still very, very new to the All Blacks fold as well. So Will Jordan, yeah, very, very huge future ahead of him. Number 15 for the United States Eagles from the fullback, Will Hooley. He plays for, he's actually an English player, played for England on the 20s. He's currently playing for the San Diego Legion. And he's up against D. Mac McKenzie, finally getting a starting spot at number 15. I thought he would, yeah, it's a difficult position because Jordy Barry is so damn good with his long range kicking. Uh, D. Mac also proved, showed him, showed that he has that long range capability and accuracy. So D Mac, Jordy Barrett. I think the only thing Jordy Barrett edges ahead of D Mac is his boot. He has a bigger boot in terms of when it comes to kicking games. So Jordy Barrett has a slight edge over the kicking game over D Mac, but overall pretty similar in terms of skill set. D Mac's maybe a little bit more agile and a bit more of a play player than Jordy Barrett. But D Mac getting his that 15 jersey, we shall see how he performs. Now the bench. This is actually really, really interesting on the bench for the United States. The United States is actually running the bomb squad. They're running the bomb squad with six forwards and two backs. Believe it or not, they're using the Springbok strategy with the bomb squad. So the the so yeah, let's get into it. So the in the forwards position we have Chad Gold, who plays for Utah Warriors, the Fa Faka Osi. Pifeletti at number 17 jersey, plays for the San Diego Legion for the Eagles. And Dino Waldron plays for the New Orleans Golds with 21 caps. This is a front row for the reserve front row for the United States. So two debutants uh, as a result of potentially players moving overseas. We shall see how these guys go against the very experienced front row from the All Blacks. We have Dan Coles, a man who likes to have a bit of fun. He's back in the fold at number 16 after getting a bit of injury. So he will be very king. He's probably, he's the, I, I think Cody Taylor is the best hooker. He's definitely up there. He's, he and Cody Taylor will be competing for their starting jersey for sure. George Bauer is back at number 17. Terrell Lomax for the Wallabies coming in at number 18 for in the tight head position. So yeah, it, this is a really, really tough front row for these new guys who has zero test caps so this could be a blowout here in the second half and then at number 19 jersey the egos has siasoi mahoney with four test caps 
He is a Tongan guy. He's a massive bloke, 134 kilograms, two meters and three centimeters tall, four caps with the USA Eagles. He's up against the Josh Lord, potentially, but debuting for the All Blacks. Well, he, I think he will be debuting for the All Blacks today in this game. At number 20 position, Moni Tunga Uiha, 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 Tunga, yeah, Moni Tonga Uiha. And number 20 position up against Richie McCaw returning from injuries and number 20 jersey as for the All Blacks. And uh, Moni plays for the New Orleans New Orleans team and he's a flanker. So we have two flankers on the bench. Andrew Guerrera, also another flanker. Four test caps, 178 centimeters, 100, 100 kilograms. So unless I'm reading this wrong, he he is a flanker. He's not a back. Despite being, yeah, he's a flanker. So that's that's what I've got here uh, from 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 the websites. He's placed for New Orleans, and he's up against uh, T.J. Piranara on number twenty-one jersey for the All Blacks again on the bench. T.J. Piranara, one of the solid. Uh, yeah, I'm interested to see T.J. on the bench here, uh, not playing Brett Brett Weber or play him in the starting position. He had a couple of starts which weren't. Yeah, we're a bit rust. Like his combination with Bowden Barrett's not that great. So yeah, it's a bit rough for TJ to be on the bench again. And then the Michael Baska is a reserve halfback for the USA Eagles. He plays for Utah Warriors. And the Michael Dublas is a reserve fly half slash fullback for the USA team. So they have two backs. So if if there's a bunch of injuries in the USA backline. Things could get quite interesting, quite weird as to what what could potentially happen. Uh, Bowden Barrett is for the All Blacks, number 22 jersey. And Anton Leonard-Brown, number 23 jersey, coming in for the center re, uh, substitution. So Bowden Barrett could potentially be coming on for DMAC here. So we're not sure exactly where he will go. Probably for Richie, potentially for DMAC. We shall see where he comes on for, for the on the weekend. But I, I do think he probably, most likely, in my opinion, he will come on for DMAC because Richie Mwonga do need that extra game time on the field. That's my opinion. But yeah, we'll see what Fawlty decides to do with the uh, B, the B rat, B bat, the B, 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 B rat. Anyway, uh, Bo rat, Barrett, Barrett. Anyway, um, yeah, he's the only Barrett that's bad enough to be selected to play the USA there you go the black sheep Bowden the black sheep anyway um that's the lineup guys very interesting stuff to see the USA playing the bomb squad let me know what you think let me know your predictions I think I think it's gonna be an easy win for the All Blacks but let me know your score what's the, how many points is there gonna be a differential let me know your comments let me know what you think this game is I believe 6 o'clock in the morning for me in Australia. So it's like 8 o'clock for you guys in New Zealand. Could be wrong on Sunday. On Sunday. So I could be wrong if I'm wrong. 